Thank you very much. Uh, I admire, of course, uh, an American speaking so, go so good uh, German. Uh, uh, I speak six languages, but German is not among them, unfortunately, because by the time I was posted in a German speaking country, I was out of the age of learning languages. It was above the 60 years old. So uh, I'm ashamed uh, not to be able to uh, address in their mother tongue to a, a German-speaking audience. But of course, uh, there are limits to what you can do in your life. The subject that uh, we agreed with Mark, do you think that if we turn off these lights, it will, can you see from behind? Everything which is written there? OK, fine, no problem. Uh, the subject that we, or the title that we uh, chose with Mark was the issue of integration in the context of uh, Turkish-German relations. Uh, the question of the integration is, in our opinion, an inseparable part of Turkish-German relations. Turkish-German relations goes back to the history we cooperated a lot uh, during the First World War. And this cooperation actually cost, costed to the Ottoman Empire the collapse of the empire. Because uh, when Turkey entered the war siding with Germany, then, of course, the allied countries regarded Ottoman Empire as their enemy and uh, they decided to eliminate it. So this is how the, uh, the Ottoman Empire was eliminated. Of course, Ottoman Empire was going to be eliminated sooner or later because the multi-ethnic empires have completed their ages. Austro-Hungarian Empire came to an end almost at the same time as Ottomans, and the British Empire came to an end a, a little later. So the uh, Russian Empire now, or Soviet Empire, came to an end again. Uh, we don't know whether Russia, which is still a multi-ethnic society, will be able to hold for a long time. We do not know. We hope that uh, they will be able to, ho uh, to hold as much as possible. So uh, the Turkish-German uh, relations uh, were at the highest during the First World War. And uh, after that, of course, uh, during the Second World War, Turkey's position was very critical. Uh, at one stage, we had, to, we had to cooperate with Germany to let the German ships cross uh, the Turkish Straits uh, towards Black Sea and attack Russians. And, uh, uh, but later on, Turkey, understanding that the war was going to end uh, to the detriment of Germany, and then it withdrew and it, uh, it uh, joined the alliance, uh, allied nations. Uh, but after 1960s, uh, because of the booming German economy, uh, there was a need for unskilled workers in Germany. And they turned to other countries, among them Turkey. And in 1961, that's to say 50 years ago, as Mark said, we are going to celebrate at the end of this year on the, I understand that the date is fixed for the 31st of October this year to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first arrivals of Turks in Germany in big waves. Uh, so uh, with this arrival, Turkish-German relations gained a new dimension. At the beginning, it was not that important. I understand that you received too much sunshine. Could we perhaps turn the... You're all right, okay. And uh, Turkish-German relations, uh, or, or the Turkish community, workers' community in, Turk, uh, in Germany, became an important element, 
not at the very beginning, because at the very beginning we were not aware of the problems that it was going to uh, raise later on. It became an important question after 1970s and 80s, perhaps. The emergence, uh, the, the lecture that I'm going to uh, deliver today will be under these titles. So I will say a few words on the emergence of this community. Then I will move to the present situation. Then uh, I will say a few words on the uh, outstanding problems. Now let's move to the emergence of the Turkish community uh, in Germany. This started with uh, the request by Germany uh, for unskilled workers. And Turkey thought that by sending unskilled workers to Germany, it would solve three problems that Turkey was facing at that time. One, by sending unskilled workers to a very highly industrialized country like Germany, perhaps the most industrialized at the time, or booming industry, Turkey thought that these unskilled workers will gain some skill by working in Germany. Secondly, it will reduce the number of the unemployed people in Turkey. At the beginning, it was 25,000 or so. And thirdly, Turkey was in need of foreign currency, and uh, Turkey expected that those workers who come to Germany were going to send money to their families, and this will uh, help to the alleviation of the foreign currency of Turkish uh, budget. So these were perspective at that time that we did not know. We did not know the other problems that it was going to, ri uh, to raise. And uh, this perception, and later on, mutual mistakes that we made, both the host country and the sending country, Turkey, was that we thought that these workers who come to Germany, after having spared some money, sufficient to buy a pair of oxen, or a tractor, or a small capital to open a shop in their village, as soon as they arrive at that level, they would go back to Turkey. But it did not work that way. It worked in a different way. And uh, many stayed here. The original workers, the first uh, round of uh, first groups that came to Turkey, to Germany, were people who did not have a job in Turkey. They came, in most cases, from remote villages, mountain villages. They did not see, even in their life, a provincial city in Turkey. From these villages, they came down to the city center, took a bus, came to Istanbul, and uh, with a flight from there, they came to Germany. So they don't know Istanbul, they don't know the provincial city where they are from. So they were, when they came to Germany, they found themselves in an environment that they never, they came never, they never came uh, across. So it was a new world, and they did not know how to accommodate themselves. Many of them were illiterate. And uh, they couldn't learn. They couldn't learn, ger learn German, so they constituted a ghetto among themselves. They came. They became an introverted society, introverted community. At that time, if both Turkey and Germany knew that they were going to stay. I presume that these two governments, since because of this historical friendship, they would sit down and uh, seek solutions for the better integration of this community into the German society. Not knowing this at that stage, they did not take any measure for the integration of these Turks into the uh, German society. The problems that we are, going, we, we are facing today are remnants of that period, because these illiterate 
peasants and workers did not appreciate the importance of education either because they were not educated. So they thought that their children could do also without education. If they knew the importance of, edu of education, while they were staying here, they could have sent their children to school and the, the first generation and second, not the first one, second generation and third generation would have been much better. Now we are facing the problems that are created by the very first generation who arrived here, who did not appreciate the importance of education and who did not pay any attention to send their children to school. And uh, a, a German sociologist uh, used a very interesting sentence. He said one day, we asked for workers, we received human beings, human beings. Meaning that when you ask workers, you say, I, I have that many, I need that many workers in the factory. But every human being is a universe. And that these people coming from the rural areas need more cooperation in order to open their heart, their mind to you. And when uh, many German families so that for them it was after all a worker but when Germans became friends with these people they saw that they were human beings like themselves despite the fact that they are peasant they are with limited skill but they are human beings and this is what pushed this German sociologist, sociologist to say that we asked for workers and we received human beings. And when you receive human beings, you, of course, care with every problem that this, the presence of this human being uh, raises. So uh, this is the difficulty at the initial stage. Uh, if uh, the, the both sides Turkish authorities and German authorities were able to cooperate at that time, many of the problems would have been solved by now. One of the difficulties uh, for uh, them to get adopted to German society was that they were not uh, allowed to obtain German nationality very easily because if there are uh, students or, or uh, people uh, involved in the international law uh, among you, you will know that the citizenship laws in the international law is divided into two categories. You solis, you soli, which means that if you are born there, you automatically get the citizenship of the country where you are born. America is one like this, where there's a melting pot, and then, of course, American society uh, evolved in this way. The other categories of uh, category of the countries have what we call the use sanguinis, which means blood law. That say, in order to obtain the citizenship of that country, you should be, you should have the blood of that race. Uh, it is not a racist law. Uh, yeah, we should not. We should not mix a racist attitude with jus sanguinis. Jus sanguinis is, among others, one way of granting, uh, granting citizenship. So Germany, uh, having the system principle of jus sanguinis, did not extend the citizenship of those who were born uh, in Germany. It, 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 at least it did not extend automatically. It was subject to other conditions. So, uh, for instance, uh, when the Soviet Union was dismembered, Volga Germans obtained citizenship directly because they were of German race and uh, uh, ethnically they were uh, German, so they obtained. The German law did not allow Turks to obtain the citizenship 
Of course, we may ask the question, what would change in case they were allowed to become German citizen at the beginning? Perhaps nothing, but when you are German citizen, then you could uh, push him on, or force him to abide by the German uh, Germans' rule more than when when he remains as a foreign uh, as a foreigner without having the right to vote, etc. Then I move to the present situation. At present. Uh, the Turkish community in Germany has become a huge uh, community. The uh, size of the community is 2.7 million ethnic Turks. It corresponds to 3% of the total population of Germany. And uh, 1 million, uh, 30,000 of them have been admitted to the German citizenship. So there is another 1.7 or 6 million uh, who live in Germany without having German citizenship. 2.7 million, when you compare it with certain member countries, full member countries of the European Union, you will notice that this number is bigger than the population of several EU member countries. Estonia, other Baltic countries. Estonia has one million in inhabitants, I think. So it is almost three times as big as the to total population of Estonia, the number of Turks living in Germany. And it is more than uh, Slovenia, which is two million inhabitants, more than Luxembourg, Malta, Cyprus, and this and perhaps Cyprus, Malta, Luxembourg combined could make only half of the uh, Turkish uh, community here. So we are talking of a very important uh, community uh, as the Turkish community, with their problems, but with their weaknesses and uh, uh, with, with, the, with the possible contribution of them. Uh, after the first arrival, when they went into difficulty, when they saved money, rather than sending this money, the Turks started to invest it here, and some of them became entrepreneurs. When we talk of entrepreneurs, especially when you change your environment, you become a more open to all eventualities, because you are uprooted from your place. So in the new place, you also carry the knowledge that you were holding there, something that a German citizen would not dare, a Turk would dare to do it, because he started from scratch, from nothing. And this is how many of them became entrepreneurs. At present, I have the figures of 2008. The number of entrepreneurs uh, are, is over uh, 75,000 entrepreneurs. And uh, those who are dealing with this subject, they say that an ethnic Turkish origin entrepreneurial bourgeoisie is also emerging in Germany. Bourgeoisie in the sense that they are fully integrated into German society. They are not at the level of the, the other Turks who are there. And perhaps they are also uh, uh, at a level that could be called some sort of bourgeoisie. These uh, 75,000 uh, entrepreneurs are active in 115 sectors. Most of them, you know them from kebab uh, restaurant owners, but there are others as well. They are uh, all type, they are doing all type of things. Some are running research center for ca cancer diseases. Some are active in the high technology. 
some are research on innovative uh, technologies, some in services, many in services, and even in areas such as detective for search, research, etc. Their yearly turnover is 33 billion euro. Every year, they handle 33 billion euro within the German economy. And out of this money, they are investing in Germany. They have invested 7 billion euro in various areas. This is direct investment. It is not buying shares of companies. It is big businessmen constructing a factory and owning and running it. Hotel, etc. There is another hotel is being built very close to my hotel now. Uh, it, it's going to be one of the biggest hotels in, in Berlin. And they employ 330,000 persons. So uh, they create problems, of course, uh, when you import people, uh, unskilled people from outside. But they also alleviate the unemployment problem by providing job to 330,000 persons. In other words, if you remove these entrepreneurs from the German economy, Germany will have 330,000 jobless people. Most of them are Turks, but there are also Germans. Uh, 364,000 are Turks employed by these entrepreneurs. 33,000 are Germans and 23 from other nationalities. Now, uh, is it the only area where Turkish community was able to integrate 100% to the uh, German society? No. In politics, also, they are very well integrated. There is one minister, a lady in the lower Saxony of Turkish origin. She is, I think, the second generation Turk. There is one co-chair of a political party, Cem Özdemir, Green Party, at the federal level. One member of the European Parliament, there were three of them in the past, Öger, the owner of the company, and Cem Özdemir was also there. And Ismail is now uh, representing Germany in uh, the European Parliament. There are five members of Turkish origin in the Bundestag. There are 25 members of provincial lander uh, parliaments and hundreds of members in municipal councils. So when we look at it, it shows that German society did not have any problem to integrate these people in their affairs. Because if they voted for these people, for these politicians, it means that uh, the German society did not see any problem of voting in favor of these people. So when we talk of the integration, we may talk of the negative, we may take up negative examples, but we may take also these positive examples that show that uh, German society welcomed those who were integrated properly into the society. And uh, now I turn to the uh, projections for 2020. There are several centers in Germany who work on the uh, foreign communities and the problems that they may create in the future. According to the projections made by such centers, ethnic Turks in the year 2020 will increase to 4 million. 
the arrival of Turks has diminished considerably, but this will due most probably to the birth rate, which is higher among the Turkish society as compared to the average German uh, birth rate. So from 2.7 million today, or in 2008, uh, they, ex they thought that uh, in the year 2020, there will be around 4 million ethnic Turks. It was a, a little uh, more than that, the uh, early estimate, 4.2 million. But later on, it was corrected downward because they thought that with the decreasing number of arrivals, it may not go up to 4.2, but it may stay in 4 million. However, the entrepreneurs will increase much more speedier because now an educated class, educated generation is coming. Those who finished universities, I think their number is something like 55,000 at present. So when most of them uh, will enter into business and uh, they will become also uh, entrepreneurs. So uh, from 70,000 in 2008, uh, these centers uh, uh, thought that the number will increase to uh, 130,000. And uh, uh, as compared to 330,000 jobs that they have created, in 2020, they will create 700,000 jobs. And their yearly turnover will go up from 33 billion to 70 billion euro. Why such a big increase uh, disproportionate with the increase of the population? Because when you think of the difficulties in which the first generation found themselves, now that it is past, the better educated people and uh, those who have uh, more money will make a bigger jump uh, uh, upward. And uh, the direct investment which was 7 billion in the year 2008, will go up to 18 billion. So the Turkish uh, origin, uh, both foreigners and German citizens, will be investing 18 billion in Germany, 18 billion euro. Are there problems? Of course there are problems, but they are not of uh, unsurmountable nature. First of all, the integration. Uh, we now know our mistakes. Both German authorities and Turkish authorities know their mistake. It was due to the lack of education at the grassroots level. And if we overcome this, I think that uh, the problem will be eliminated as the time goes by. For the education, there are two types of theories, two types of approaches, slightly different between when you look at it from the Turkish side and German side. The Turkish side uh, believes that uh, certain politicians, and I am, I am an exception of this, uh, they believe that they should start with the education of Turkish language. Whereas I believe that if they are going to stay in this country, they should start education in Germany from the nurseries and kindergartens. A person of Turkish origin or Turkish citizen, no matter who he is, which uh, category it belongs to, if he is going to, to seek going upward in this society, he should speak German without a foreign accent. He should think like a German. And he should feel like a German. Without this, the society will not accept you. They may accept you, but with a distance. Those who were elected, 
I gave the numbers, they were accepted by the German society because they spoke proper German, they worked, their mentality was like German, and the Germans did not hesitate to vote for them to go to Bundestag or to the Lander uh, parliaments. So on the question of education, I know it from my own experience. My mother tongue is not Turkish. So when I went to school, I started with minus one or minus two at the primary school. If I spoke Turkish as good as my classmate, I would have gone much quicker. I was able to catch them towards the mid-year of the first class. Because I was, despite everything, in a Turkish-speaking environment, so with my mother tongue, which is a tribal language, I also heard Turkish around me. So when I went to school, I had difficulty, but I was able to overcome it later on. And this helped me to learn five more languages later on. And uh, so I believe that if a Turkish boy, a girl, is not sent to the nursery or kindergarten where German is spoken, when he goes to the first class, he will start from minus two, minus three, or minus four. Because no matter how clever and intelligent he is, he can he cannot communicate. There was a, a very interesting example. There was one a Turkish student which was who was sent to school here and he could not cope with the class so the teachers and the administration of school decided to send him to Zonder school this I mean school where they learn slowly of course he had more difficulty there then the family decided to send him to Turkey And later on, he turned out to be a super intelligent person. And he became an engineer in Turkey and invented a lot of things with with patent, international patent. And he was interviewed in Turkey by one of uh, these uh, uh, centers who carry out research on design. He said that when he went to school, he thought that the average level of the school was below his knowledge, so he couldn't cope with the school, with the other uh, uh, classmates, because he thought that he was thinking more quickly. But the teachers thought this as a lack of communication, and they decided to send him to Zonder school. Whereas he was superior, I mean, he was above the average of the class. This is, of course, one example, so you cannot generalize it. You cannot say that all Turkish students are super intelligent and they, they were, you cannot say this. But there may be cases like this. And it's a pity if you deprive uh, this child, which is super active, uh, from contributing to the inventions and to the innovation in, in your country, either in Germany or in Turkey. So education is very important. And uh, we started, I am one of the founding members, as uh, Mark mentioned a few moments ago, founding member of the ruling party in Turkey. And uh, I remember from my uh, time when I was consul of Turkey in, in Belgium, how the Turkish community abroad should be helped. I told Mr. Erdogan, who is the prime minister now, I said, look, we should uh, change our policy regarding Turkish communities abroad. This change should be that whatever resources these, these communities can generate, human resources, time by, to be given by people, active people, and money, we should 
ask them not to send this money to Turkey, but to use it for better integration into the society where they live. And when we came here, we first made a uh, uh, meeting in Köln, and we said it loudly to a big audience in Tur- of, of Turkish people. And in the coffee break, they came to us and said, are you cheating? Are, are you kidding with us, or are you serious? Because so far, everyone coming from Turkey told us that they should send money to Turkey and that they should not keep it here. So we decided to change it and utilize, suggest, started to suggest them to use this money for better integration into the society where they live. Are there problems? Yes, there are problems. Uh, For instance, there is a law in Germany that says uh, roughly for Turks who want to bring people from Turkey within the frame of family reunification, that person who is going, who is supposed to come should speak a minimum 400 words German, something like this. This is against, of course, human rights, and uh, I'm sure that uh, the court case will continue and will go ultimately to the uh, uh, Strasbourg Court of Human Rights. And uh, are the German authorities right? Yes, to a certain extent, because this facility or this door was used inappropriately by many Turkish citizens in order to bring new people from their village. They arranged marriage here and they used this door in the German legal system not for serious marriage but only to bring an additional person from Turkey. When you use it for such purposes, of course, uh, you may uh, suffer the consequences. But uh, when you put everything one on top of the other, uh, you could say that this is not in conformity with international conventions that Germany has signed. I'm sure that uh, when the two friendly countries get together, we'll find a way to do it. Actually, uh, the only difference now between Turkish position and German position is that Germany says that we should subject this person to a German course in Turkey, and after he or she learns German, very minimal German, of course, 400 words is nothing, and then he or she should be allowed to come here, whereas Turkish authorities say that let's do it the other way let him or her give a temporary visa of three months or four months whatever period is necessary let him come here and after three months subject him to an examination and if not then he or she should be expelled why Turkey thinks that that way Because we believe that when the person is faced with the reality, when he goes to the streets and he cannot ask the way or he cannot buy uh, chocolate, he cannot buy milk or bread, then he or she will will understand the difficulty of not learning a language. So he will take more seriously learning language. Germany does not want to risk it because once he arrives, Sending him back creates other problems. As that German socialist said, we uh, asked for workers, but we received human beings. Because expelling human beings, I know that German people uh, feel uncomfortable to disturb uh, 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 the feelings of of a person to that extent. So... uh, this is only a small difference. Perhaps uh, the, two, the authorities of two countries will find a solution. 
One thing that we complain uh, uh, from time to time in Turkey is that the integration problem is made a material for political campaign at the local level. This is a very easy material to be used. Nationalism and that type of things are the easiest problem to move people in general. See, these Turks are stealing our jobs. Uh, how can we give, etc.? When you speak like that, then you obtain votes. And uh, unfortunately, from time to time, there are politicians who use the integration problem in order to gain vote, but it is detrimental to the long-term interest of Germany, in our opinion. Xenophobia and Islamophobia is, in our opinion, less in Germany than in many other European countries. In the past, there were cases of xenophobia. That's to say, houses were arsoned, you may remember, uh, 10 or 15 years ago. But the consequence of it turned out to be a better understanding of what Turkey is doing and Germany is doing. Because German authorities did not try to hide behind this, and they immediately started investigation about the person who, who may have arsoned the house. And the, the mother of the boy who was burned alive in that house avoided to, at, at all costs to accuse the German authorities. She said that, I don't have anything against German authorities. I have something against that person who put fire in the house. So you see, this understanding uh, brings the, two, the authorities of two countries closer because xenophobia, Germany, because of the past, recent past, is very sensitive on this xenophobic uh, attitudes, and that the authorities take it seriously and deal it very deal with it very seriously. Islamophobia uh, actually is perhaps more in countries like uh, Holland and perhaps to a certain degree in Denmark, and uh, it may have there may be cases of Islamophobia, but it's not widespread in in German society. So we should be uh, watchful in order to, to not to let it to go beyond permissible level. Permissible level, by saying permissible level, I mean that in every society, you can find people who say stupid things and who try to achieve stupid things. It's very difficult to avoid it. But we should not let it spread to the entire society. And uh, both countries will gain if this is done. I will stop here and thank you for your attention and now try to answer your questions. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Herr Jakes. I think that's a very angemessen way to start our conference. I think that's a very important way to start our conference. I think that's a very important way to start our conference. I think that's a very important way to start our conference. I think that's a very important way to start our very thoughtful reflection. So, I think that's a very important way to start our conference. Now, we have a micro and a small micro, and I would like to ask for questions and comments. In English or English? Ich kann das dann kurz übersetzen. Und uh, wenn Sie können kurz auch vorstellen, Ihren Namen und wo Sie kommen, das, das wäre super. Danke. Ja, uh, my name is Gordana Kierens and uh, I live in the beautiful Rheingau. Um, and my, I actually have a remark, I have a short remark and a question uh, for you, Mr. Jakos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I liked a lot your remark about the young Turkish man who in you know, the end turned out to be an exceptional engineer and entrepreneur who had problems with the school. I had a, in, I have a private project called Xeno Friends where I publish profiles of successful and, uh, and very um, in, uh, integrated uh, foreigners here in Germany. And the last uh, profile was of a young, last profile was a young Ar Iranian girl who was the best in her school in Iran, the best 
best pupil of all's, and she ended up in a Hauptschule in Germany because her German was not sufficient for the for the other schools, and she still ended up finishing her uh, her school, her high school, with 1.2. Uh, uh, not Hauptschule, she did on the end uh, Realschule, but she did uh, with 1.2, she finished university. Is it high, 1.2? One, one exceptionally yes. high. 1.0 is the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, she, and she above, finished... Above the average, yes. She is definitely above the average. She finished the university with 1.8, and she, she works now for uh, Comet Bank. Um, she, she ended up studying uh, IT, I mean, uh, information technology, and she works today for Comet Bank. Exceptional, exceptional. And I think schools do have here need to do more uh, in, a, in a sense of integration of, of kids who come at a school age and... Uh, and could compare a little bit more, maybe um, uh, marks, uh, have a better pattern in how to compare marks and how to uh, evaluate really high potentials because her path could have gone a completely other way and a potential like her wasted. Um, that's actually uh, one, that just as a remark. My question for you is I liked a lot your, your statement and your comment uh, although it's a much different than um, uh, Erdogan, um, Mr. Erdogan's comment a few weeks ago here in Germany. We are not like uh, the Stalin era communism uh, in, in Russia. <laughs> we are allowed to disagree with our uh, prime ministers and uh, with our bosses. Very good. <laughs> well, the Turkish is also democracy, so it's uh, the other difference to, to communism. Um, but um, when we look at your at your numbers, and uh, certainly there are many entrepreneurs, and there are very successful entrepreneurs, uh, many from coming from university. But um, uh, please forgive me; I don't want to be uh, offensive or insulting. It just I came a little bit. Maybe uh, we all tend to be a little bit to wishful thinking. Um, so I was not sure, as you talked about the ministry in Lower Saxony. Um, I, and here I have to ask people who love Lower Saxony because I don't know the political strategy that President Wolf took. If he really um, told his voters that one of his ministers will be a, a Turkish woman. Um, because voting for him and voting for him and a Turkish woman, I don't know, would have been different. So I'm not still, sh I'm not sure um, that we are there yet to vote because right now the election in Baden-Württemberg shows this controversy with the Green Party where um, there are accusations that Mr. Mubus used uh, the fact that Özdemir is Turkish to influence or to, to go after the Green Party and all this. So um, I do, do uh, respectfully disagree with you with the issue of uh, election. Uh, I don't think that we are at that level, that Germany is at that level to elect um, to directly elect somebody. I, I'm open but for our opinions. This is, this is uh, an indication that the Germans do not have prejudices, at least against the foreigners, against the foreigners. If he's uh, a suitable candidate, then they vote for him without prejudice. I do hope so. <laughs> I do, I would wish, but... but I'm uh, sure that there are other people in the German society who think the other way around, but the end result is that Cem Özdemir is made co-chairman of the party, and that lady is made uh, minister in Lower Saxony, or uh, others are, uh, three of them in the past, were made member of the European Parliament. Yes, but they were not elected by the uh, re regular water from the street. They were elected by their parties. Yes, but it doesn't it show that the party is a party. They don't have prejudices against the foreigners, which is very good. That is a, definitely a right step in the right direction, yes. but th that's a, the difference between election. When, uh, you and, uh, when we go to an election and cast our vote and say, yes, we vote, uh, because or, or, or despite or whatever our arguments are, but we voted for this person. So In this case, let me make a distinction. I will withdraw my word that the German society accepted it, but Germany accepted this. I mean, Germany has no prejudices. Germany, in the sense of whatever the decision-making uh, process is, this decision-making process produces 
uh, a result which shows that Germany has no prejudices against foreigners mm -hmm. if they are properly integrated. Well, that's, that's a way uh, to go, but definitely an, an interesting uh, presentation. Uh, thank you definitely for that. Um, my name is Anna Luben, and uh, I'm a student of European culture in Constance. And um, w what I can see from your presentation, if I got it right, that um, is that there is a big... Um, discrepancy between who is German and what is German. You were talking about um, citizenship, German citizenship based on blood. This is this was uh, the concept. It's the German law, I mean. It's yes, it's, because it's the law, right. So, But uh, the law shows the concept of who is German. And um, yes, you're completely right. It's in on the legal level. And then there is something uh, that you called to be German. And you, you said, like, um, Turkish people uh, who, want, uh, who want to be successful in Germany should uh, feel like Germans and should think like Germans. And um, I see a big problem in, in this statement because this suggests that there is a, the German culture, the German way to think and the German way to feel. And I see a big danger in this because I don't understand who tells what is German. Germany is re, uh, very diverse in uh, the sense of culture. Um, so I, 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 for me, this is um, a really... Um, old school understanding of culture. It's uh, uh, referring to n national concepts and uh, like the modern understanding of culture is uh, in the way of culture practices and whatever. So um, I, I disagree with, with this concept on the one hand and on the other hand I um, think that this is the concept of culture that it used in the um, integration debate in Germany. And so I was wondering why this is your position. Thank you. I have an excuse to uh, say it this way because I am not that knowledgeable on the definition of culture as you are because you are studying it, uh, European cultures. For me, the Germanship, if we can call it that way, to be German, may vary from people in Stuttgart, Schwabe, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Hamburg, and in Berlin. But when I say to think like a German, if he is going to stay in Berlin, he should look like a, like a German, wear, dress like a German, think like a German, and uh, to be part of this society. Uh, Germanship may be divided according to the landers, but the person who lives there should be Germans like Bremen people and uh, in Köln like the Köln people. Uh, if he is going to stay and make his way in the Köln society, Kölnische society, so he should do like people who live there. This may be different from the Germans of other places, but still I believe that if you want to be part of a society, you should not remain different. As long as you remain different, the other people will put a distance between you and themselves. This should not be done. It may not fit your scientific definition of what is culture, but when I look at it from the political standpoint, because I have to look at, at it from the political standpoint, because there is a problem and we have, so, we have to solve this problem. What is this problem? The Turks are, there, are alienated either by themselves or by the authorities of the country where they live. 
this alienation should be eliminated. And you may make a special definition for this purpose, and you will see that the problem will disappear. Scientifically, the culture may be defined in a different manner, but for the purpose of our discussion, you may make another definition of culture, and uh, you, you may solve this problem with this new definition. The problem here is the integration and the, the difficulties that stems from the lack of integration. This is how I look at it. Uh, when, uh, if there is a, a person here who is not dressed like you and who is distinguished because of his ideas not on the scientific level. You and I, we disagreed on scientific uh, definition of culture, for instance, but both you and I, we accept that we may have a different definition for something. But this does not mean that we should be different in behavior and uh, in values. What is the value of the society? If the values are different, then you may disagree. You, 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 may, you cannot be part of a society where you do not agree with the values of this society. By respecting, perhaps, the, 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 the rights of the others. Yes, it, it has to be mutual in this case. Who is going to... Give the floor. Yeah. Just one remark that goes with it. I'm, I'm Gerti van Rabenau. I come from Regensburg, uh, originally from Braunschweig. That means I learned that I was a Prussian and not a German when I came to Bavaria, but uh, I survived there mm -hmm. and uh, without speaking Bavarian yet. Yeah. So I would change your, would want to change your statement into something like, okay, in terms of education, I think. The, the, a person that is not, not German should definitely try to get a very, very good degree of uh, education in order to succeed in any way in our society. But I, 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 I thought your ideas about um, yeah, really being perfect, speaking a German perfectly, I mean, what is the perfect German? Without, yeah? without a foreign accent, you yeah. should not be able to distinguish from a native German speaking. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's possible. I mean, a Bavarian will be able to succeed in Berlin and, and the other way around. I, I was accepted as well as, an, as a non-Bavarian. So I think here this goes too far in my eyes. You should have a good education. You should accept and tolerate the, the values, our values. But I think... Uh, in, in my eyes, your, your suggestion was went a little bit too far because I mean this would be complete, complete integration in terms of giving up your own values, your own culture, etc. That's how I understood it, and, and for me, I think uh, it goes too far. Uh, yes, but of course, uh, coming from a unitary country, not a federal country where there are uh, differences in languages from one lander to the other. Uh, I may not have paid attention to that subtlety that German is spoken one way in Bavaria and in another way elsewhere. But I still maintain my uh, uh, order of thoughts that if you are in Bavaria, if you are grown there, speak Bavarian English in a proper manner. When you come to, when you come to Berlin, people at least will not say that he is a Turk. He is a Bavarian or speaks Bavarian language. So this is part of Germany again. But you are in the German state, after all, German territory. So the difference, according to the lender, is not a difference that the Germans in general will reject. They will not say that this Turk speaks Bavarian uh, German, so we don't accept him as a, as a Berliner. It will not, this question will not arise, in my opinion. Thank you. Um, my name is Susanna Schutenberg. I come from Humboldt University and European Ethnology and Gender Studies. Um, my question was, um, 
you were talking a lot about efforts that Turkish people should do to integrate into German society. But I'm sure that um, during your career, you were also able to see that there have to be some efforts from the German side to integrate Turkish people. And um, you also showed us numbers, and I was very impressed by those numbers because I think they're quite disproportionate. Do they really represent um, the part of Turkish people that have um, tried to integrate very well? I do also have a migrant background, and you might not see it, but I am always super surprised when I see how low um, numbers of people with a migrant background in um, important institutions are. And I'm so convinced that is, it is not um, because they are not trying hard enough. I'm sure that there also um, exists structural discrimination, that people are not allowed to take part in um, institutions to uh, participate. So I think you should also um, tell us about your experiences that you saw where um, German I don't know, institutions made mistakes and did not integrate um, foreign people, because this is also part of the integration. Actually, there are, and uh, but uh, by profession, when uh, I worked, of course, 40 years in diplomacy, so uh, every proportion, every person is subject to professional distortion. And I, am, I was also subject to pro professional distortion looking at the problems by picking up the positive examples. Negative examples cannot be eliminated entirely. The examples that I gave are the positive examples. And the, if the problem of education is given proper attention from today onward, in one or two generation time, in 25 years or 50 years, there will be better integration and the proportion will also decrease. This, this proportion that you are referring to will also decrease. That's to say, compared to the number of the, uh, number of the population, 3%, they are not 3% in the banking. They are not 3% in higher education. They are not 3% in medical sciences, etc. It is there. But uh, we have to think that we still suffer the consequences of the mistakes that were made in 1960s. And uh, of course, th there is an instinct of defense in every society. And uh, uh, the relations between Turkey and Germany are so good that we can say it loudly to our German friends, telling them, that, look, you are making a mistake here, like the one where we disagreed on whether they should learn Turkey, that they should learn Germany in Turkey before coming here, or they should learn it here, or who is supposed to pay the expenses for teaching Turkish to the children outside the school hours. That type of things, or uh, or uh, teaching imams, the religious leaders, should they be taught in German or in Turkish? Uh, because in Turkish, imams are taught in Arabic because they have to recite the Quran. And whether it was good, no, it was not good. I think that it should be taught in Turkish because. When you read Quran in Arabic and you don't understand it, then it, it doesn't serve. I mean, the, the, the Quran does not convey you the message. In Germany, if the imams speak good German, at least they can address to subsequent generations, which will be less Turkish-speaking generations. There are people in, in Germany who were expelled to Turkey. He said, I am expelled from Germany because I do not fit the criteria, but I dream in German. When I dream in the night, when I sleep, my dream is in German. So how can I get accustomed to the Turkish society? And they have difficulties there. So there are a lot of problems. Uh, after a certain while, not speaking Turkish will cease to be a problem. 
At present, we look at it as a very important problem. But in America, when you ask people which origin are you from, they say, I'm German-American. I am Dutch-American. Do you speak Dutch? No, they don't. Greek origin uh, Americans, Jewish origin Americans, they do not speak Hebrew, but Americans. Perhaps uh, Germany, I don't know whether German authorities uh, aim at creating a society like the Americans. Uh, we do not know. It's just another melting pot. It is something else. Uh, Mark mentioned the melting pot, but uh, American society was created like this. Will German mentality accept to transform Germany into a melting pot? It, it remains to be seen. Well, it was uh, <clears throat> we're, uh, I must also commend you on uh, contradicting your uh, minister president on the part of you know uh, integration, his integration strategy. But we're really missing one point here. It's not just the Turkish people integrating into German society. It's also, uh, of course, uh, the German society implementing some Turkish peculiarities into its own culture. Like, we integrated pizza from the Italians. We all love to eat döner kebab. We all love to drink ouzo, at least some of us. And, uh, of course, I, as a, an American immigrant, uh, I grew up bicultural. I can, of course, behave like a German, but I'm still American. So, and the Turks will remain Turks again, but uh, Turkish origin. Yeah, but they don't like have to give up their identity. Drinking beer and uh, and uh, eating perhaps other things, but this will come. And the the the, the other elements that you refer to are the normal result of the globalization. We cannot make a Germany, a fortress Germany, where you forbid uh, pizza, you forbid, uh, you prohibit uh, kebab, and you, you prohibit uzo. So you cannot do it any longer. I mean, it is, it, it's going to enrich, definitely. But with the evolution of the entire society, the society should be re ready to to get used to eat pizza, kebab, and drink uzo. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yes. And uh, you may know that there is a German uh, community in Turkey, in Alanya, which is uh, 3,000 strong, old Germans, pensioned. They have their butcher, the, the, the baker, and the municipality, everything, they, they, they are very happy. And people around this community learned a lot from Germans. There is another community, of, uh, bigger community of Dutch people there, in Alanya, again, in southern Turkey, who have established that they, they have their church and everything. So we learn from them, and this is good. And the, you may know, if you study it a little bit, the Ottoman history. Ottoman was a multicultural state. And especially because of the fact that the founders of the Ottoman state were nomad people, they adopted all the habits of the settled people in the areas that they invaded throughout the history. And the Ottoman... In the Ottoman society, vertical mobility was more visible than, than any society in the world. When the Christian children were uh, recruited in the army, Janissaries, if they distinguished themselves, they climbed up all the hierarchy and they became Grand Vizier. Out of four or 45 grand viziers, there are only two who are of Turkish origin. All the others are of Christian origin in the Ottoman society. If you are skillful, you distinguish yourself, you climb up, up to the top level, since you cannot be sultan, to be sultan you have to be member of the 
the Sultan imperial family. Otherwise, Grand Vizier is the top level. So all these Christian children who were recruited in the army climbed up and became. So this was the richness of the society. This is how the I mean, Ottoman Empire w was able to uh, live for 600 years. Yeah, just uh, just a quick remark. I still do side with you, Mikhtayakri, because I don't think um, that there is a contra that there there is a integration and the loss of your identity because you integrate. I mean, I do consider assimilation and integration that our prime minister perhaps does not uh, use. I use something different, a different te terminology. I am against forced assimilation, not. Uh, assimilation. If I want to behave as a German in all regards, nobody can stop me. It's my individual right. If the German authorities force me to be assimilated, then I will not accept it. Yeah, but um, um, I think when uh, I can talk from my example, I consider myself integrated, but I still have my Yugoslavian roots and my, my, my culture in me, and that will remain. It doesn't matter how good I speak German, it doesn't matter how, uh, how many German friends I have, I will always, re I'm, one part of me is now German, uh, but one part will always remain Yugoslavian. And uh, it will just stay there, because that's part of my identity. Yes. And uh, this is what's enriching. And this, I think, will stay also with people who integrate. They will always have these experiences that they're with, with parents, with going back to home country, um, visiting grandmothers um, and grandfathers, and it's seeing another, another uh, point, another culture, another, having another point of view. So I don't think there is a, that you're completely giving up um, because at a certain point you can't. There's a very thin la line between assimilation and integration. So uh, you referred to it very well. <laughs> let's let's draw. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting discussion. <laughs> so uh, my name is Anna Maria Fabian, and I'm from Hungary, but I live in Germany, and I'm a teaching assistant at the University of Bavaria. Are you integrated or assimilated? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm integrated, <laughs> but I have dop uh, a double identity. I have double identities because I have. Um, um, I um, sorry, but it's very complicated because German it, uh, isn't my mother uh, my mother tongue, and it is very complicated to switch between German and English for me. <laughs> so, but I'm from from Hungary, and I studied um, in Hungary German language and international relationships. I studied in Germany media communication and Euro uh, and communication and European studies, and uh, I have a project. A project to um, to the integration uh, of um, people with higher uh, with uh, graduation, um, and um, I uh, think it's very very uh, difficult to integrate these people. But we just we were just talking about the uh, integration of uh, persons. But I guess it is not, it is not just the language that they, that the integration is very difficult. I guess there are some also other culture, reasons. Culture like this. Cultural, uh, yes. Culture is the most important in integration. Yeah, culture, yeah. But the most programs in Germany, they don't teach culture, just the language. And there are some people with a lot, with lot of graduation. Um, they are graduating, and other people they are, aren't graduated. They can't read. They because can't Because they don't write. have colonial past. Yes. In the colonial past, they also teach culture. Yes. Germans do not have it. French people go to Africa and they ask the ch school children to recite by heart Le Gaulois nos pères. The, the black people say that the the 
Wales people, the Golua, were our fathers. It is, it is. I mean, th this is how they acted. Germany does not have this, this cultural. I mean, this background, colonial background. Yes, but my question: What do you think? Uh, what can, uh, what, uh, what should uh, Germany and Turkey do that the integration and the integrational projects that, that and the integration projects they can and the international network in this area between Germany and Turkey can be better? How, uh, what would you say? Who, um, what is the um, Uh, what is the task of uh, of German uh, and of Germany and Turkey that the people in Germany can uh, be integrated? Turks in Germany yeah. should be. Yeah. I think education. Uh, if they come to a term, to an agreement on how the education should start from the scratch, we may make a I mean, we may cover a very long distance. There may be always one or two cases which is not covered by the method that you have chosen. Th there will be discrepancies in all systems. But a, a full agreement between Turkish authorities and German authorities on how to handle this education problem, from which stage. If I were to live in Germany, I would, uh, as soon as my child is born, I will give him in the arms of a German uh, babysitter and continue from there. If I, I am determined to live in this country and to climb up social levels in this country, this is how I should be doing. Perhaps my perspective may be different from yours because I am looking at it from the political standpoint. For a person to be fully uh, admissible to a society, uh, 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 speaking the language without a foreign accent is the first mark. But o you may always find people who speak the language of the environment in an excellent manner, but who may think differently. But if you are you, you went to the school from the, uh, from the beginning at all stages with the German uh, children, you have more common with them. Of course, we are not like the communist era young uh, students who have to think in the Marxist-Leninist system. In the free societies, every person will think differently. But the way to look at from different angles is also something common. There are some common values in that society, common denominator of a culture. These common denom denominators could be, should be caught. And uh, remaining Hungarian origin German, Yugoslav origin German, Turkish origin German, American origin German, without hurting the others, without alienating yourself from the others. I think that there, there is a way, there is a, a, a middle ground to achieve this. This is what I aspire in Turkish-German relations. But short answer to your question is that if the, the authorities of two countries have the same perception of how this problem should be overcome, then it could be overcome uh, more easily. Hi, my name is Verena Seibel. Um, I grew up in the southern part of Germany, but now living in the Netherlands. And I have one remark and one question. The remark relates to your um, to the German language, which you say it's the main prerequisite of integration, and I totally agree. However, I think we should not forget that one of the main assets immigrants in Germany bring with by nature is actually their 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 chance of learning more than one language, growing up in bilingual. And I think this is really like huge human capital, which is not really used in a way it could be. That really we have 
Turkish people who speak Turkish and German fluently. And this also relates to uh, cultural bridges we want to create. And I think the emphasis should be also focused, uh, put, should be put a little bit more on that. My, que my question um, relates to a totally different point. Uh, what do you think, how much information of the integration of problems immigrants experience in Germany actually swaps over to the Turkish community and especially to those who might be potential immigrants? So potential immigrants in Turkey, how much do they actually know what kind of problems Turkish immigrants face in Germany in terms of economic um, advantage, in terms of um, um, discrimination, etc.? Uh, let me start from the uh, the question, and I will also come back to your comment regarding the more than one languages, uh, learning more than one languages. In Turkey, the problems faced uh, in Germany by Turks is uh, sufficiently uh, widespread to be known by everyone. But, uh, of course, many people blame the other side for, for this problem without blaming themselves why these difficulties arise there. Uh, Turkish authorities will believe that they are right. Those who are not able to integrate uh, into the society in Germany, they will blame again the German society and German authorities rather than themselves. And those people Let's think of a young uh, girl who is engaged to a young man in Germany, and uh, she is asked to learn German before coming uh, here. She will revolt, saying that my human rights, etc., uh, is violated uh, because they ask me to learn German before before I go there, etc. So, the b people have an instinct to put the blame on the other side. Uh, so, uh, if the, you could put an empathy, you, you may make an empathy and put yourself in the shoes of German authorities and German people, then you may find a perhaps smoother way of uh, resolving this problem. Learning uh, several foreign languages, which is very much widespread in, in, in Holland, and uh, almost uh, every single... Uh, Dutch speaks uh, perfect uh, English. Uh, the beggars in the streets beg in also money in, in, in English, uh, as far as I can see there. Uh, it is an additional question. Uh, it doesn't uh, change the parameters of learning in a perfect manner the language of the country where you live. It's a must. If you want to climb the hierarchy of the social classes in that country, whereas we may perhaps make a distinction also and offer this to the potential Turkish uh, immigrants, if you are going to return to Turkey, then there is no need for you to learn perfect English, uh, German. You may keep your child not to send to the nursery, kindergarten, etc., because he doesn't need to speak perfect German. Only when he goes to school, he will start from minus one or minus two, according to the level of German that he would be speaking at that time. Otherwise, he doesn't need to speak German. He doesn't need that degree of integration. What he can learn at school is an asset for him when he goes back to Turkey because he may be planning to climb up the social classes to come to change the classes, upper classes in the Turkish society. I'm uh, in favor of distinguishing this, but when you live in a country and when you have to go to school in that country, you should be at the same level with your classmates in order to compete with them. Otherwise, a brilliant child w will be wasted because of, la of, la of lack of language. And it is not his fault. 
He was born a, into a Turkish family. It, it is not his choice. And he is punished because of this, because in the family they speak Turkish and speaking Turkish at home, and they sent him to a German-speaking school. So this problem has to be solved. Again, in the terms of the uh, this uh, social scientist of Germany who said that we asked for workers, we received human beings. Every human being is a universe, problem-wise. So when you take the case of the child, your heart is broken because uh, he is punished for something he's not responsible for. Yes, hi, my name is Sophia Lambert. Uh, I'm from the United States. I moved to Germany last uh, September. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, my question, um, you know, given given your background, uh, your professional career, um, and in light of this conversation, I would I was interested in asking you your perspective on German-Turkish relations at a more national level. Um, that being your opinion uh, on Turkey entering the EU and whether or not that is tied to some of the, uh, I guess, problems associated with with cultural integration. Thank you. I don't think that the cultural integration there is a problem. Uh, we are more inclined to interpret the Germany's uh, stand at present on the question of Turkey's accession process is due to the question that the uh, uh, integration subject is made a material for the local politics. It is very easy to be used when you take such subjects. And we do not want to generalize this to, to the entire German society because the previous government uh, thought the other way around. They were in favor of Turkey's entry. And the uh, SDP in Germany says loudly that it is in favor of uh, Turkey's entry. I have friends. Uh, very high level, high ranking friends in the CDU, CSU, who believe firmly that Turkey should join the European Union. So we are not, and the person who are directly involved in this process, like myself, I'm in my capacity as the chairman of the EU committee in the Turkish parliament, we do not want, or Turkey should not get entangled in what one political leader in a EU country or another politician in another country is saying regarding Turkey's entry. Turkey should leave aside all these statements saying that they do, they say so because of their domestic political reasons. Turkey should look beyond the horizon and should utilize this process of accession to the European Union in order to put more order to its interior. That's to say to make Turkey a first-class democracy, a country where fundamental rights and freedom are enjoyed by more people, to make Turkey a transparent market economy, lesser corruption. When you achieve all these things, it may be res less important whether Turkey joins the European Union or not. And uh, by the time Turkey reaches the threshold of the European Union, we do not know whether the present politicians, leaders, who are opposing Turkey's entry, will still be holding their present posts. Uh, His Excellency President Sarkozy is against Turkey's entry, but his predecessor, is on the record to say publicly, uh, it was before the 2004 uh, European Union summit, he said, if the European Union will be content by becoming a free trade area, we could do it without Turkey. But if the European Union 
plans envisages contemplates to assume global responsibilities then we cannot do it without turkey who says this is it a man in the street in france no this is the president of the republic of france the predecessor of sarkozy who who looks at turkey's entry like this so we should not get entangled in the in what one leader says we wish of course a very successful long career to his excellency sarkozy with his charming wife but we do not know whether he will be holding this post by the time turkey gets to the threshold of the of entering the european union so we should distinguish it we we do not want to link these things to the statements of individual uh, countries leadership also ich würde jetzt eigentlich nur noch maximal zwei redebeiträge nehmen wollen ich habe jetzt gerade hier zwei meldungen gesehen ja und deine noch na gut dann <laughs> um, my name is Alexander Doheimann and I'm from the University of uh, Heidelberg and uh, I have, uh, um, I'm interested in your opinion in the question of um, the fact that the double citizenship is forbidden in, G in Germany and that uh, Turkish uh, young people, the uh, Turkish people who are born in uh, um, Germany and uh, who are citizens of Germany that they are um, obliged uh, to decide when they are um, when they become uh, adults whether uh, they want to have the German or the Turkish uh, citizenship and uh, yes I'm interested whether you uh, in your opinion in this question and the second question is um, whether you think that um, the definition of uh, the European identity and the U European culture is compatible to uh, the Turkish identity. Thank you very much. On the question of double uh, citizenship, I believe that the double citizenship uh, should be allowed, but it has also obligations stemming from being double citizen, especially in countries where for instance, military service is compulsory, you have to serve in the armies of both countries. And you have to abide by this. When you go to a country, th that country will regard you as his own citizen. And when you go to the other country, as his, uh, the other also will consider the same way. Uh, in the United States, it's possible to have the double citizenship. In the United Kingdom, it is possible. Germany did not accept it. This is their choice. And I know that Turkey uh, wanted to avoid it in the past as well. But now that we have seen the advantages of uh, not forcing Turks to adopt, or, or not prohibiting Turks uh, f from adopting another nationality, that's to say, if a Turk becomes United States citizenship, and he puts the candidacy, his candidacy to become president of the United States, we shouldn't tell him, look, you cannot become a candidate for the presidency of the United States because you are a Turk. It's stupid. So uh, if there are obligations and if the person is prepared to assume the obligations stemming from all citizenship, he should be allowed to do so. And Germany chose a single nationality, which is its choice, as Turkey used to do until 1980s. Only because of Germany, we decided to accept, because of allowing Turks in Germany to benefit from the citizenship of Germany, that we, start, we woke up at that time. And I wish that other countries also woke up and see the advantages of it. Regarding the European cultures, Turkey is, a, we do not regard Turkey as a, as a Muslim country. We say that Turkey is a secular country 
with predominantly Muslim uh, population. What is the difference? The difference is that in Turkey, a, constitu a constitutional provision says that no law, no law in, in Turkey could be based on religious principles. In Egypt, which is also almost a country with secular practices, there is a provision in their constitution which says that no, no law in Egypt could be contrary to Sharia. Turkey is one extreme, Egypt is another extreme. So uh, we applied to become a member of the European Union because Turkey is, is aspiring to embrace universal values which is embraced by the members of the European Union countries. And this is why so far we achieved so many reforms. In the year 2004 or 5, Mr. Günther Verhoegen, who was at that time commissioner in charge of enlargement, said for Turkey that the reforms that Turkey achieved in the last 18 months is more than the reforms achieved in Turkey in the last 80 years because we wanted to catch the EU standards, EU aki, but also standards. Aki, you can translate the law and pass it in the parliament, it is there. No, values, think that way. Now we have difficulties for the judges in Turkey because they did not grasp the mentality of the judges in the European Court of Justice. The, the law is there. It's exactly the same as French law, German law, and Dutch law. But they read this law differently because the mentality is different. So we want to bring Turkey slowly to that standard and make Turkey, let Turkish culture also develop in that sense as a secular country. We are not there yet. Hi. Hello. This is it. Okay, my name is Anya. Um, I study business and politics at a university in the UK. And my question is relating more to the previous question of the one from behind. Um, like, I mean, Turkey is a recognized candidate state for accession to the European Union, so more or less, like, they will accede to the European, U European Union anyway. And my question is, like, a lot of voices think that um, having Turkey within, like, on the boat, basically, um, this will be, like, a strategic advantage for relations to the Middle East. And, like, I'm wondering what's Turkey's position in relation to that, and especially now with what's going on in the Middle East and the maybe democratic change. With what, what is going on in the Middle East makes uh, the application of Turkey to the European Union all the more important in our opinion because the reason why the Middle East has remained the way it was until before the, uh, before the uh, popular uprising, why, European, why the Middle Eastern countries was like that? Because European values did not reach these places. Would it reach this region easier when the border between European Union and these countries will be after the Turkish borders or before the Turkish borders? Would, it, would the, these countries absorb and get acquainted with the European values better in case the line is drawn in the Turkish-Bulgarian border or in the Turkish-Syrian border. So we presume that the closer the European values are there, these countries will be affected more closely. 
why Turkey is one step ahead of the European uh, Middle Eastern countries as far as the values in universal values is concerned because we are in closer touch with the European Union countries. So if Turkey becomes a member, European values will come to their uh, doorstep rather than having uh, a country like Turkey in between themselves and the European Union. This is what we believe. And something very interesting also, uh, when uh, th there were discussions whether Turkey is drifting away, etc., and turning its back to the West and uh, its face to the European, to the Middle Eastern countries, many Middle Eastern countries, including Iran, Syria, and the others, said that we do not want Turkey turning its back to the European Union. We want a Turkey which is in the European Union. So they do not prefer that Turkey should turn its back and becomes like themselves. No, they want that Turkey should join the European Union and uh, set an example to them for themselves to become European as well. Okay, so ich würde jetzt diese Möglichkeit äh, nutzen, äh, das Diskussion äh, kurz zu beenden. Es gab andere Fragen, aber ich möchte punktweg sein mit der Zeitplanung. Äh, aber Sie haben viele äh, Kommentare inspiriert, viele Fragen. Und ich finde das schön auch, dass wir nicht alle die gleiche Meinung teilen. Äh, weil das ist genau die, die Punkt. Das ist, deshalb sind wir hier. Also ich denke, für diesen Austausch äh, bin ich auch sehr dankbar für Ihre Offenheit. Uh, über alles zu diskutieren, uh, auch uh, Ihre persönliche uh, Erfahrungen und Gedanken und auch professionelle. So, vielen, vielen Dank, uh, Ihre Exzellenz, uh, Herr Jakes, und wir sind sehr dankbar, dass Sie, Sie hier sind. So, Dankeschön. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much.